So today we're going to revisit the long Langstroth horizontal hive that died during the winter of 2020-2021, somewhere about mid-January. So it's open. We're going to look on the inside here and see what's going on and evaluate the bees. Let's see why they died. What do we think is happening here? Taking off these one inch red oak cover boards. There's dead bees there on top. There's a drone. And we're going to, of course, pull this follower board out. And uh, it did have openings in the bottom there so the bees could access this open space. This is a five foot long, long Langstroth hive that I built myself. Here's another drone, interesting enough. And that's going to be a very telling sign later on. The goo that you see here on the top board is silicon grease. I will not be using that again to stop wind from blowing through the joints. And the bees you see that are alive in here are just foragers that are looking for something to eat. Now look what's on the bottom boards here. Varroa destructor mites. Not everything, of course, is a varroa destructor mite there, but there's plenty of them laying around. And this was a Saskatrass package of bees that was installed early last year. Also, this is a sensor that I put in there, humidity and temperature. All it does is tell me if my colony is alive, and of course, the temperature has dropped after this colony died out. We have our 10 2 inch rigid foam board in the top of this hive. The hive is made out of inch and a half thick material, sides, top, and bottom. So, they were plenty warm. Now we're going to look at the first frame we've come to and look at these white sugar crystals in here. That's because late in the season we gave them two to one sugar syrup. Common to do just before things start getting cold in the fall. And look at the little transition holes they have here just under the top bar so they can move from frame to frame. Here's another little forager there that wants to rob this colony out. Again, white sugar crystals left over from two to one sugar syrup. Looking at the bottom board here though, they had no problems with moisture control. This has a single entrance, no top venting, cover boards, follower board, and they were doing really, really well. That's why this is such a big disappointment. And again, there's another drone there. And I'm also gonna show you the bottom closely eventually, but I'm gonna suck these up because I like to collect the dead bodies from the bottom. And of course, suck up those drones, not drones, but road destructor mites drones too but I want to see what their condition is under the microscope later but look at this capped honey that's what they get from the environment and then the lower uncapped areas with the white sugar crystals in them are from the two to one syrup pretty distinctive this is uh, better comb pre-drawn synthetic beeswax I used this hive as part of that test last year the bees took to it right away and used it there's better comb right there and look at it capped honey top third we're going to go frame by frame until I find the cluster, and then we're going to talk about what we think happened to them. More capped honey. Looks good. Notice there's not a lot of mold or condensation evidence in here, so I'm very happy with that. Today, by the way, the temperature is in the mid-60s. We're opening this up. Propolis. Sticking those things together there. Look at all the capped honey here. So these bees did not starve for sure. Again, look at the holes along the top board there just underneath. They have transit holes that they can transfer through. You couldn't do this with plastic foundation. That's why I went with all foundationless and better comb exclusively. Next frame, look at all that capped honey. Lots of it. That's why my hopes were so high, that they were going to do well, that they're going to come right through winter just perfect. That's why it's such a puzzle. A lot of people lost their bees this year. Now my other colonies are doing really well, but I saw so much capped honey in here that I decided I'm going to get this hive butler toad out, and I'm going to put some of these frames in there. I don't want to feed this back to the bees until I know for sure what's going on with the colony, but I definitely want to uncap this, spin it out, and use it for myself. Nothing wrong with spring harvested honey. Looks good. Each of these frames averages about seven pounds of honey a piece. So why waste it? You could just put it out at a feeder station somewhere and let bees rob it out if you wanted to, but I prefer to harvest it. Plus we can get the wax out of it and everything else. Look at that. All capped honey. Again, this is on the better comb frames with the wire reinforcement.
and that one bowed out a little bit so actually I'm going to move it over one space there. You can also drop silica packs in here just to make sure no condensation forms in your stored honey. And look at all these dead bees on the bottom. More Varroa mites down there. There's some capped honey. Here's the beginning of the cluster of dead bees. Look, they're spread out all over the place as if they were suspended in animation. This hive has a single entrance. We're going to show you that in a little bit too. I'm going to take my time, go nice and slow, because we really want to look at things here. So that does look like a little dysentery there on these top boards. The bees could move freely over the top of the frames, around the sides of the frames, and of course they could travel freely through the bottom, under the frames. There's another cluster there. And these numbers are way down. You would expect to find a lot more dead bees in a dead out like this. Also, I'd like to point out that it doesn't stink. Usually when you have a bunch of dead bees on the bottom, the moisture and the decomposition causes them to smell just like a dead animal. So we're going to take a closer look here. I'm also looking for the queen or evidence of the queen. And I think what actually happened here with this colony, queen died. Either she died or there was a late season swarm for some reason and they never replaced her. That explains why there are so many drones in here. And look at the cells. This is critical. See the little bits and pieces, little remnants, little crystal chunks in those brood cells? That is Varroa destructor mite feces. We had a mite issue. No secret though. So many mites on the bottom board. Saskatras bees last year required mite treatment. This colony received a mite treatment as well. So they don't hold their own with mites very well. In fact, they had the largest number of mites of any bees I've ever kept. And you can see that uh, they weren't starving. So it really was a dwindling away of numbers. So the bee population just fell off. That's why through winter, even mid-January, they were actually making drones. That's your first sign. We got a problem. Very disappointing because, of course, we had the one warm day in January and uh, the bees were flying out of this colony. They were doing cleansing flights, but of course, there's no way to tell if you had the queen. And I did look through this pile of bees here to see if the queen was present and I could not find her anywhere. There is a kind of long looking bee there around the one to two o'clock position, but that's just a worker bee. That was not the queen. And uh, look lower right there. We've got some of those, what's referred to as bullet cells, which is evident of a laying worker making drones. So it takes a while for a worker to become a laying worker. The queen has to be absent for an average of three weeks before those pheromones kick in and they activate their egg laying capability. And there's a drone right there in the middle. So they were raising drones. And of course, in the drone cells, they were reproducing mites. So the row destructor mites are evident all over. They really seesawed back and forth last year. They had a high mite count, treat them, the mites fall off, the numbers are low, the mites bounce right back. So we have what looks to be a dead out due to the queen either missing or just dying. Look through it all, could not find her. And again, there's another drone cell. See at the top of that when it's upside down. So we have a lot of waste. Now what looks like drone cells at the top here, that's just stretched a little because this uh, better comb was sagging some. Nice fat drone right there. Why would we have drones in the middle of winter? The only way is that the brood that is being raised is drones exclusively. So the workers were just running out the end of their lives here. Look, there's honey in the top left, capped. This is after I scraped everything away. We've got bees in the cells as if they were starving. They shoved themselves right in there. And of course the cluster was over the top of it and that's how they were all staying warm. And then you would expect to find another cluster on the opposite side of the same frame. 
And again, we're looking at those drone cells to the right, and we're looking at the piles of Veridistructor mite droppings right inside those cells. So this was a mite bomb. The sad news is that probably facilitated taking out these bees. The good news is it was wintertime and they couldn't spread the mites around to other colonies. And we'll be doing mite counts of the other colonies as the nectar flow really kicks in and they strengthen up. But looks to me like I'm going to use this uh, horizontal hive again. We're going to try again this year. Because with all the resources and I see these transit holes and I see the condition of the hive itself, had the queen survived, I think they would have made it. I'm just going to evaluate the rest of it all the way to the end here and see how much honey was stored. See what their situation was resource-wise. Again, just a spattering of dead Varroa destructor mites on the bottom throughout the length of it there. I get tired of vacuuming them up. There were absolutely too many mites. More than you would count. And then, of course, this is where the brood frame was through the year. Why is it located here? Because that's where the entrance is. Top of your screen there, half-inch tall entrance. So the design worked. The insulation was adequate. The queen either disappeared in a swarm or something just happened to her. These bees would have made it. I think they would have continued to move down the frames. Initially I was thinking uh, they just didn't move and that's why they died out, but that's not the case. They just weren't reproducing. Look at all that honey. These are some deep frames. And look at how warped the better comb is on this one. That's because this particular better comb frame with the better comb in it was held in there with toothpicks. We don't do that anymore. I run wire reinforcement through all of them. Any of these frames that had uh, brood in them, I'm going to get rid of. So we're going to pull everything out, anything that the bees died in. And I'm just going to destroy it and I'm going to start fresh. We're going to reinstall a swarm into the same horizontal hive this year. And I'm going to try this again. Because for all practical purposes, that's the entrance, by the way. The one that someone was asking about why it's off the floor and it was about the dead bee piling up uh, issue. More capped honey, more honey than they ever would have used. So I'm impressed. I'm impressed with the resources. They were only making drones. Which means, of course, the fat-bodied winter bees would have been the longest lasting. They ultimately just eventually die out on their own when they're not being replaced with the small brood patterns that would normally be developing during this part of the year, just before spring. So mid-February going into March, you would have seen a population build up and they would have been consuming this surplus honey here. I did not feed them over the winter. We took away that rapid round feeder because I knew they had a lot of resources. Just decided to start looking at these drones. Drones, if you don't know, are male bees. You would expect to find Varroa destructor mites on them, but the mites, of course, were all laying dead on the bottom. Again, because bees are dead, the mite has nothing to benefit from its host anymore. And then we're back at these frames. So these are going in the fire pit. Just going to get rid of them. Looks like it could have been the beginnings of a supersedure cell at one point, but that would be of no use if they hatched out a replacement queen, an emergency queen. If they had uh, eggs and larvae to do that, she would have had nothing to mate with in the middle of winter. You also can't buy in a queen and fix things. Another drone right there, no big surprise, because notice the cells. These are not normal drone cells, which are large. These are worker cells. So what they did is they took existing worker larvae and uh, the quint, well, worker cells, and then the laying worker put her eggs in there, and that's why we get these bullet cells that are absolutely kind of normal size, except for that really bulbous convex surface there, which tells us they were hatching drones. Not a lot of them either, but uh, the workers just died out on their own. They just sat there. So high varroa load, no queen, normal mortality at the end of their 
expected life. Drones with nobody to feed them, really. If the workers start to die out, drones don't feed themselves. That's a drone cell right there. That's a drone cell. So I am going to try again. I'm satisfied that this is due to the loss of a queen. Combined with, of course, disease that's conveyed by the row destructor mites, so it's a double hit. So I don't think it's necessarily due to the long Langstroth hive horizontal configuration. I think if we had a stronger population, they would have ultimately just kept going. That is pollen stored there right next to the capped honey. Standard uh, kind of brood frame layout. So I'm going to vacuum all this up, remove all the frames, leave two frames with cap tiny in them. Just for kicks, because I hope within the next few weeks we'll catch a swarm and install them in the same horizontal Langstroth hive and maybe have better luck going into this coming winter. Bro destructor mites all over the bottom here. You can spot them. You don't need a magnifying glass. They're just so obvious against this pine. And again, the bottom is an uh, inch and a half thick, two by twelves, two of them married together, five feet long. The sides are two by twelves. The top is formed out of two two by twelves and a two by four down the center. And then that insulation board, there's a drone right there. Yeah. Drones are all over the place. So I think that's what happened. We ended up with the loss of a queen and they did the best they could and the workers after about three weeks activated their ovaries and started laying their own eggs as that last ditch effort to survive and they made a bunch of drones and then they all just ultimately died out. The cluster is too small to survive and without reproduction there's no new worker bees coming out. And that was the end of things. So I'm just going to clean it out, remove the frames, close it up, and get ready for this year's swarms. These are all some of the workers that I vacuumed up off the bottom. I like this little handheld battery powered vacuum because I can just drop the bees in there and uh, then wash them out. Rinse them through a screen, let the Varroa mites wash out. These are all drones. And then uh, dump the Varroa mites onto a coffee filter so I can get some good contrast. Dry those out with desiccant packs and then put them under a microscope so I can see if their feet are damaged. But I guess I'm going to have to tell you that the Saskatraz bees do not handle Varroa destructor mites. At least none of the packages that I received. And others in my area that got packages last spring, the spring of 2020. Uh, they had some of the highest row mite counts I've ever seen. So I'm going to leave this hive tool in here. I've decided this year that for biosecurity, I'm going to keep a hive tool in each hive. And I won't be transferring from one to the next. So we're just going to close this one up. And let the bees inspect it. It has not been unheard of that I've had an empty box here and had a swarm just move in on their own. Not counting on that, but not saying it couldn't happen either. So at least I got... Uh, quite a bit of honey out of it. Not a total loss, but it is actually a total loss when it comes to the bees. So anyway, we're going to do this again. I'm going to keep working with this long Langstraw. Thanks for watching.